Hello and welcome back to finally another video on the Tool Teardown channel. I know it's been a while, I'm sorry. Life sort of got in the way so YouTube took sort of a lesser priority. Now, first things first. No, I haven't forgotten about the uh, giveaway. It's still here inside the box. As you can see, it's all nice and shiny in there still. So we'll uh, sort this out as soon as we get this video out of the way. I just thought it'd be nice after a long absence to do a proper video before we do this. So there'll be a separate little video about the giveaway. We'll go through the comments maybe together. I'll, I'll figure something out. Anyway, let's get this out of the way and over with. This is what you guys have been watching, wanting to see. Clicked on the thingy for the, let's put it like this, I guess. The whoop, there we go. The Einhell Professional TPRO18 Set LEBL Solo. A lot, of a lot of letters and words, numbers and digits and things. The long awaited, about two years in the making, this. At least uh, it's been publicly announced by Einhell that it's coming. Two years ago, they first started communicating this thing. It was supposed to be September last year, it's now January 2023 and it's finally here as a set. So you have the plunge router, the palm router and the actual router bit that fits both bases basically. So it's a three piece set with some accessories thrown into the mix. No battery, not charger, not included. No, no, no. Uh, German Duo Design, whatever that means. I think it's the industrial design company that came out with the pretty looking device. Part of the power exchange platform, obviously. So this is the cordless router set that everybody in the INL platform that I've read in the communities and whatnot have been begging for and asking for for so long. It's here now. Professional. Now this is something that uh, sort of intrigued me most of the last year. They introduced this last year in their catalog but they didn't really describe it as such, what that professional meant. Is that now for professional use? Is it more premium than their classic and expert range of tools? So I did some digging on their website and this is what I found. I'll put it on the screen. Basically the expert plus range, which got replaced by the professional range. And this range of tools, all were gonna be brushless. So they come with a brushless energy mount or pure energy as they called it now, as of the beginning of 2023, comes with a 10 year warranty on the brushless motor unit. Now it's a limited warranty. It only covers the actual motor, which then they do an investigation on. And if it turns out that it's because of a build or a quality issue within the motor unit, then they give you the warranty. If it's just wear and tear, it's not, etc. PP. And then also, if they find out that you have been using classic or expert devices in a professional setting, as in you're a contractor, a builder, or whatever not, you use those tools, then you don't get a warranty on that either. It's only the brushless professional tools. 10 year warranty on the electric motor, on the brushless electric motor. New this year, which is nice for everybody, the power exchange batteries, you know, from all the way two amp to six amp, eight amps now, they are now three years. <laughs> Of warranty. There used to be two. There's three now, which is nice. Um, so yeah, I already mentioned now INL is catering for this new and exciting market, I guess, to gain market share. So they do actually allow for professional use. I found this in the on their website in the warranty bit and bobs. So that's interesting. Um, quickly going back to the device. What have we got? So we have the set. So later on in the year, I think about March. They're going to be individual. We'll go into more detail later, but you can buy this as a plunge router or as a palm router solo. The set is $199.95. The plunge router bit is going to be $195.99, around about €160. Euros. I'll put them down in there as per usual. The palm router configuration, which is the, the entry level of the cordless router set up here, is going to be 120 euros. It's 18 volts, so it uses one power exchange battery. It's a brushless motor, as we already talked about. It's a set. Eight or six millimeter 
uh, router bits fit in here. They offer two lifting shanks to put in there. It's got a fine adjustment on the plunge router base. It's got speed control on the router, which we'll go on about. And it's got clean working area. Well, it won't be as soon as you turn it on because it'll be dusty. But I think what they mean with this is it's got dust extraction um, features as part of both bases. As I said, Duo Design, German designed quality by Duo Design. This this whole thing doesn't flow very well, but anyway, their marketing team, they, it's basically a German design studio. I tried Googling them to find more information, but the, apart from their Instagram page, there's no real website for these guys, so what's the point putting it on a box? Anyway, it, yeah, it's, they, they basically make this thing look pretty. Some other bits and bobs that we might cover before we go into the box. I know we're all excited to find out what's inside, but yeah, height adjustment on the um, plunge router base is 35 millimeters. So you can go up and down 35 millimeters. It's 40 millimeters in the palm route configuration. They claim it's uh, 1.34 kilograms of weight. We'll check that later on in the video. And then the RPM is variable between 10,000 and 30,000 RPM. So this is a direct drive electric motor. So basically the motor unit that sits in here, the shaft is directly connected to the bit where you put your router onto. So you control basically the speed of the motor directly. There's no gearbox or anything in there. Let's get in it. I need to this is this, I'm too close I can't get the I do this every time I'm rubbish at unboxing I don't know how people do this on the internet unboxing something for the first time and then it's just like it doesn't fit in the freaking right there we have it a beauty keys full of stuff not so much ironed beauty case eh? with the creases in there eh? all the way from the Chinese factory where they manufacture this particular tool Got some sort of um, plastic padding in there. It feels a bit like one of these wrinkle books that you can get for babies. Um, anyway, getting off topic here slightly. So in the box or pouch, as you can see. Oops. Does that come on there? Oh, it come on. Not, not, not quite, is it? So we've got the actual router base. Feels quite substantial, that does actually. So we got that. And then we have the palm router piece installed into the base. We have the mandatory newspaper of this particular week and model. Right? The safety brochures, uh, user operator manuals, uh, everything else big and important in the world of INL. Um, so we'll leave that there for now. Uh, we don't want that crease. And a, a box full of rattly bits. Not just the beauty case, but the goodies inside are the actual router itself. So this is the electric brushless motor uh, on which you then stick the battery. And the other side is where the router bit goes. So this is a direct drive. There's no gearing or anything in there. Um, this spins from 10,000 to 30,000 RPM, depending on the speed setting that you select. Can take six or eight millimeter router bits, as in the shank of your router. They either come in six or eight. Personally, I only ever use eight. They're just a bit more stabler. Um, yeah, a little bit more material to them, a little bit better quality, and I think the offering is slightly bigger as well. There's more manufacturers making them, basically. Um, yeah, simple unit. So as i already shown, your speed control on the front. We're going from one to six. Unfortunately, nobody makes tools that go all the way up to 11 anymore, which is a shame, hey? Eh? For those of you out there who got the hint. Um, then we've got the on off switch and the safety switch if you like so you press the unlock to basically activate the the device and then you press the power button to start it this has a slow start feature which takes a bit of time i guess i know why they've done it we'll talk about 
that in video two, if you're interested, where we do the tear down, where we go into a little bit more in depth about the materials and why, how it works and whatnot. Um, but yeah, we won't bore you with that in this video. Pretty straightforward. As a safety feature, if it detects that there's too much current draw, it'll cut out the motor, so it'll automatically stop. The LEDs start flashing or pulsating at you. You don't have to press the unlock button again to turn that off. Press it again to turn the LEDs on and then press it to start the motor again. So there's like a bit of a, a process there when you stall it. It won't auto start either when you have it with the battery on off. So it is pretty safe. So if you take the battery out while it's running, it, you have to go through the cycle again to get it going again. Pretty decent. If you want to turn it off, you can hit either of these buttons. That's pretty easy as well. So sometimes you, you're using it and you miss out on like, oh, sh you know, you go on the field, oh, where's the button? I'll oh, press that one. It actually turns off. So that's a good thing. Um, so yeah, that's the basically the, the, the router part, the expensive bit of the kit, if you like. Then this kit or set, depending on in which country that you buy it from, uh, however they like to pronounce it, comes with a plunge router base and a palm router base. So this unit will fit either in here, and now you have a plunge router, as in you can plunge it into the material, set it at a certain depth, and off you go. Or you have a palm router configuration, which is also known as an edge trim router, um, which gives you the opportunity you can still set the height but this is not like adjustable so you basically set it you lock it and then you'll be routering away on the edge of a wood piece to basically trim a nice chamfered edge like this shape for example if this focuses onto your workpiece these units come separately as well so the cheapest option that you can get from Einhell at the minute in the cordless variety of routers is the palm router configuration. So it'll come like this. And then the palm, sorry, the plunge router configuration like this. Now we've covered the features of the actual module there. Let's move on to the plunge router base. At the back of the router base, you'll have the locking mechanism. So your router has a groove in there, which is also present there with a little peg as a counterpart to the groove. So this has to line up with there. It slots in there, it goes all the way down. You have at the front this aperture as well, so it sits in there, it, it hits the sort of edge of the aluminium housing there. You then tighten it up with this one. Don't go all crazy because it can't really rotate. And then that's basically your plunge router assembled. There's a dust extraction as well, which we'll hit in a minute, which clips down the bottom, comes out the back. Then on the side here, you have your two little screws, which is for your parallel guide, which we we'll come to in a minute as well. These are spring loaded, which is quite nice. So they don't rattle loose when you use the device. And then after about six months, you're like, where are these bloody things gone when you haven't used them for a while? Then on the front, you have your revolver setting for depth adjustments. So you basically can have this set to a certain depth and then lock out automatically. So if you do a lot of the same repetitive grooves in a board or you're milling something down to a certain thickness every time, you can like get in and out of the wood every time consistently. So this turns. In all three, in all three modes sort of thing. Let's get a bit of light on there. It's a bit, sorry, I'm filming this. It's dark outside. It's a bit un, un, an ideal sort of thing. Uh, less ideal, I think, is the proper English word for it. So that's uh, that one. Now, a lot of the other videos don't go in about this detail, but you have a quick release feature. So you basically, this plastic wheel, you unlock it all the way, and then this becomes a button, which you can press. 
and then this goes up or down. So with this you can basically zero out the device after you installed a router bit. Not so much this one because this is not a plunge router bit, this is an edge router bit, so that goes with that one. But if you insert your router bit you can then zero it out and then when you set your depth gauges you can then have it set so it's always going in onto the set depth there and then that's basically always going to be the same depth you can then obviously you know have it go a little bit deeper by the fine adjustment and then when you're all happy with it you lock it all in place and this can't move you go down and then at the back of this device you have the actual locking mechanism to lock it in place and keep it down there so you don't constantly fight the springs that are in here that keep it pushing up and down. Now in this configuration I can recommend using something like the 6 or the 8 amp hour batteries because they add an extra kilo of weight to this assembly which helps it stay down, adds some stability to it so when you're moving along I mean yes it's a little bit top heavy but only in this this direction really because the battery hangs forwards a little bit that way not so much and side to side not so much either because the base is quite wide um, when you're holding it you tend not to pull it towards you anyway you're pushing it away from you um, so you have that extra control in, in this direction anyway so this isn't so much of an issue right I think that's all the features on this assembly now if you buy the set you obviously have two so you will find yourself swapping them out every so often in this configuration if you only buy this then you'll probably keep it like this because it's pretty unuseful you can't really use it unless you want to injure yourself like this and go all bananas because then it just becomes a food blender a very dangerous one so you find yourself just having it parked in there forever if you buy it as a set however you'll be swapping and changing every so often so you take the device you put it in here again it's got the groove and a little peg there right there so this only goes in one way as well because this has the gearing in the front as well you have to be a little bit more precise as to where you drop it then you can pre-tension it with this screw here and then you have the option for height adjustment to do it like a fine adjustment of the height so that you can get your edge route a bit dialed in to the exact depth that you want and then you lock it in place with that one so it can't move in its solid now then you have basically a rubberized molding here to hold it firmly you can hold it on top of the battery in there now in this configuration because the base is so small I can recommend using one of Inel's smaller batteries like for example this 2 amp hour version because otherwise it gets very top heavy so you put another kilo of weight on top of this assembly with this 6 amp hour battery for example it very easily goes wrong it falls over easily so if you're doing edges you end up holding the device crooked it becomes very heavy to, to hold as well whereas with this setup it's more compact it's almost sturdy enough to hold in one hand but I could always recommend having a second hand there to stabilize the device um, I'm not sure about these dimensions just yet so I couldn't tell you if this allows for the universal router base to screw this on so you can have a wider surface area like a transparent piece of plastic basically where you bolt this onto so it's a bit more stable right I think that's the features on both the plunge router base and the palm router base so let's move on to the accessories During the unboxing obviously made a bit of a joke about the cool box you know the beauty case um, it comes with as a set the individual items come in a cardboard box the set comes in this pouch storage bag beauty case cooler box whatever you want to like so it comes with these two detachable pieces of plastic which you can remove there's velcro strips at the back there I don't know if that's visible but let's put some light on it some velcro strips there and here obviously 
And then on the inside it's got a little pouch there where you can put the user manuals, for example. That fits in there quite nicely. So that's nicely out of the way. And then you can separate the three devices or have it like this, you know, have, have one like, like one like that, and then have one one pouch on this side, the other one on that side. You know, to throw in all the loose little bit bits and bobs. And then that one on that side. There you go. I'm not a fan of this storage stuff. I have my tools hanging on um, the walls. So I can just grab them when I need them. And not having to faff around opening boxes and hide them in closets and stuff. The only thing I must say, if we now move onwards, the accessories which come in this cardboard box. Get rid of the the beauty case there for a second there's quite a lot of them and some of them when installed make this rather cumbersome as well so I don't know how easy that then becomes to fit so this one is held in with a little screw I'll show you in a minute the other one is um, held in with a little quick release fastener type thing but it's an extra step that you don't have to take take everything apart, put everything back together. So I, I think I find myself just putting these on a shelf somewhere and just grab them. So that beauty case, I think I'm going to give to my wife for the holiday or something, if she likes it. Um, anyway, moving on. So as I mentioned, thus distraction, distraction, extraction. The sucking away of particles. Huh? So because this comes as a set, you find yourself having one of each so if you buy these solo this will come as a combination and this will come as part of the palm router configuration now this if we unlock it for a moment this has some pegs there's some peg there and a little aperture there and a little screw hole there so this is pretty self-explanatory but i'll show you anyway that clips in like that and then you can screw it down which is a little bit finicky with this other big knob there especially if you've got big fingers which I don't but even I find this a little bit awkward to use um, yeah, there you go so that's now securely in place that can't go anywhere and then you can put your extractor your vacuum cleaner or shop vac whatever you like whatever you use on there it's got a little bit of a of an extra sort of round over piece um, so the dust that gets blown up there's a little bit of like a barrier and you have this protective shield so it doesn't fly straight in your face um, bit of perspex there PC polycarbonate um, and it goes up in that little hole there it's a bit tiny but I guess they want to have maximum suction right at the source so that's why they made that opening a little bit small but yeah that's basically the the width of it's literally just the size of this finger so of my finger uh, it, it's it's not a lot then the dust extraction for the palm router configuration you'll need a screwdriver this is a little phillips screw in there oops trying to do this from behind the camera it's a little bit difficult to can't see where the tip is huh and then there's a little peg here which clips into that hole there there we go and then the screw goes in there is this is a bit finicky so like i said you don't really want to have to do this every time you just quickly want to use it so you either end up not using it with this which is a horrible mess every time or you just leave it on there but then in the pouch it, it, I don't know how is it gonna fit if that's gonna be easy with all the other stuff in there um, so yeah that's basically your dust extraction for that bit now what else have we got so we've got these guides and some spanners we've got collar, a center punch piece and a um, duplicator ring if you like, copy ring. So 
We'll get to that in a bit. So the spanners are obviously for the swapping and changing of router bits. So the big spanner fits on this one. And the small spanner fits on the actual shaft of the thingy. Um, I've read some reviews online already that said that this locking peg, which if you can see goes through the hole there. So that locks the shaft in place so you can actually undo it without the whole motor spinning along with you. So you could, if you're not like a gorilla, tighten these things up like crazy because they these collars, they're tensioners, so they, they, they ensure that it's all nice and tight. So you don't have to go all berserks on it, but yeah, apparently it's already snapped off by some people. So that's why I guess there's two of them there. in the box there. Right, now, while we're in here, oh, you can already see, so if you don't use the spindle lock, there you go. 21 millimeter nut, in case you're wondering. So that spanner is 21 millimeters. And in here, you've got the collar. So if you want to swap that out. Whoa, there we go. So this is for eight millimeter shafts. The other one is six millimeters, which obviously it's an eight millimeter, so don't fit. But yeah, you can put in both there. And then, so you have the two options there. I only have eight millimeter router bits kicking about, so I will probably lose this at some point and then never see it ever again. Uh, anyway, you've got the option there to have both. Right. Now, moving on to the palm router setup. At the back here, there's a knob to which you can attach the edge guide. Now, the edge guide, as you can see here, has some groove. And in the housing, as you can see, some more grooves. So this goes in one of these grooves. If I undo it far enough. And then that'll clip in like this. And then you can tighten it up a little bit so it doesn't fall apart. And then you have the adjustability of it like this, like so. So you can set this depending on where your outer bit ends up, you know, way out there or very close. Um, you have that option and then you have the option to basically set the position of this to be right at the edge of your material. So you can pull it further away from the center of this or push it in a little bit more. And then this runs on the edge of your material. And then with this, you can like loosen the whole thing, set it up and then tighten it obviously so that nothing moves and then it runs on this quite noisy. I don't think there's an actual ball bearing in there but we'll find out in part two of this video series. Um, but yeah, that's just a little bushing. It's quite loose as well. Uh, again, I don't know if I'm going to be using this personally an awful lot because most of my edge trim bits have got whoa, have got a ball bearing on them so you don't really have a purpose for that one. I now themselves sell this somewhat affordable router set which don't come with these all that much so then I can guess that's where that comes in but yeah again I'll probably never use it. Um, don't forget to tighten this up otherwise it'll rattle out. This hasn't got a spring in it like that one there. So this one will go missing if you don't tighten it because of the vibrations. Then, so to use this, you have to put it inside there. It fits in that aluminium housing there. And to do that, you'll have to remove this plastic piece, but and I already sort of knackered one of the screws there. Um, it's a Phillips head, Phillips 2 head, but they're so tight that I can't get three of the four screws loose. So the only one that I managed to get loose is this one here. Eh? But um, yeah, the other ones, they're locked tight in so badly that I won't be able to use this. Um, so yeah, that's a point for I know there. Maybe go easy on the Loctite so people can actually do it. 
according to what you describe in your user manual there, I know. So uh, this one for now, we don't have a use for it, but then again, most of the copy or mirror router bits, they've got the ball bearing on the inside, as I'll demonstrate to you now. So for instance, this one, so instead of having the ball bearing on the outer side, you have it on the inside, so you run this to on the edge of what you want to copy and then the piece underneath it is being carved by the bit. So, <sighs> nice to have, but more gimmick than useful, I think. Right, so then we've got all the options for that one sort of covered. Let's move on to the plunge router base. Now with the plunge router base you'll see these two fasteners here that we talked about already. Now standard installed as you've seen when we took it out of the box you have this mechanism here which unfortunately has rather short arms so there is not a lot of adjustability in this direction. It's it's like you can see with the screws are sort of it's 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 yeah it's in or out there's not a lot of room there for adjustability now this is your parallel guide attachment point if you like so this goes like so and then this tightens up which this is all very cramped here yeah? these wing nuts are plastic by the way so this is like I said this is very awkward if you have large fingers this, this is a bit difficult for you so that's why I don't understand there would have been neater solutions possible there but they decided not to and then this goes on the underside for the parallel guide application this goes like so you screw these too tight like so and then you have your parallel guide opportunity now you can then obviously adjust it so when you want to go really close to where your router bit is going to poke through Sorry, I'm not in the frame there, am I? So your outer bit is going to be smack bang in the middle there. For demonstration purposes, let's just show it to you. When you hold it upside down, don't forget to um, lock this. I speak from experience, the whole thing just falls on the floor, which isn't great. And then um, let me just flip this to one of the lower settings. Hold on. There we go. That's it. So this is the maximum setting. It's basically it's bottoming out there. So there you can see that's where your router bit is. So you can go as close as uh, what have we got here? Just out of interest. This is about eyeballing it, but yeah, to the center of the route shaft there, we've got about 23 millimeters. So that's as close as you can get to the edge. So that's of interest here. And then obviously you can put the fastener in this position so you can get even further outwards. I wouldn't recommend it because then it becomes utterly unstable and unprecise, as you can already see, it's, it's it, it it allows for some wiggle room, so you'll have a mill or so play there. So there's people that use the sliding rail of a circular saw or a track saw. Now, if you want to use it as a device to make a perfect circle, again, they have slightly better alternatives out there for the people who want to um, experiment with cutting circles. A screen rather than me, me talking about it, you're looking at an empty desk um, or an empty workbench. So again, you have the option to adjust and then you can make circles. So you basically put this in the wood and then your router goes like this. Oh, the only thing I forgot to mention there, um, I'm, an, I'm an idiot, is you have to flip the assembly around um, because obviously like th like this you're going to be cutting crooked so the whole thing needs to be swapped over which like I say 
talk amongst yourself and then this is the awkward bit right this slides out this goes like this and then i've put that the wrong way around i'll speed this up a little bit so that it makes sense while you go there in the end and then this goes in like this like so tighten that up like so and then this one there we go there you have it there's still a bit of a obviously but you want this inside the wood but yeah there's a little bit of a gap there where um, you know you, you can uh, so not 100% flush there but obviously this goes inside the wood so you want to press this down and uh, then it should be a flush surface and then you can make your all uh, circle circle motions if you're into circles and then you can obviously adjust the radius of your circle by loosening this one and set it but then again if you go in all depth yeah this uh, this whole area is very crowded with this setup so there's, there's not a lot of room for your hands to go if you're working on like going in quite deep so uh, that's one of the criticism I have about this. The, the, the device itself, great. The accessories, not so much. So you probably find yourself using some aftermarket solutions that are somewhat better thought out than this is. So let's check the weights. So zero at the minute. So the actual router unit, what are we looking at? One kilo. Okay, so let's add the palm router base to that and the router unit there we go so we're looking at 1.35 kilos for the base uh, sorry 400 grams for the base and the little parallel guide has another 100 grams there then if you want to use it with a 2 amp hour battery you're looking at a total weight of just under 2 kilos 1.9 kilos there router base as such weighs 1.3 kilos you add the router to it we're looking at 2.3 kilos then all the parallel guide are going numpty bumpty adds 2.6 and then i'd recommend using it with a 6 amp hour battery just to have that extra bit of stability there 3.6 kilos you're holding in your hand in this configuration there we have it the weight so let's move on to do some test cuts next now you join me outside at our palm router setup configuration here for the um, iron held cordless palm router part of the test got a piece of pine here about 12 millimeter thick pine so we're going to do an edge on this and then after that i've got this uh, cut off piece of um, life edge oak and we're going to do the same on this um, and see how she does. I won't use a vacuum cleaner or a dust extractor just to give you a chance to listen to the device and you know so you know what it sounds like etc. So to turn it on obviously you press the safety switch the LED lights come on then you press the power button And then it takes a good few seconds for it to come up to speed. Now this is at setting one, three, four, five, six. So this is 30,000 RPM. So let's see how it does. So yeah, it takes a bit to ramp up and to ramp down, so it's not like a, an emergency stop sort of thing. Um, yeah, the edge is such. Let's have a closer look. I guess this is more approved of the router bit than anything else, but yeah, that went pretty effortless. As I said, this is a 25 degree chamfered edge uh, on this piece. Pretty all right, pretty effortless, I'd say. So let's um, change to the oak and see how that... So let's try oak. Let's see how that works. So again, we'll do it at a setting six. 
you press the safety unlock switch, the LED lights come on. still on there but yeah as you can see pretty effortless as well um, I'm still a bit on the fence regarding to the positioning of this extractor port if I'm honest because but then I guess maybe because I'm standing from behind the camera trying to film this at the same time so maybe I have to just use this a little bit off camera okay so for test number two we've changed the router over into the um, plunger router base and now we're going to cut some grooves into this piece of pine and then later on again in the, uh, in the oak that we just uh, put the edge on and see how she does. So this is a 16 millimeter, again this is a Bosch Professional Carbide Tip 16 millimeter router bit, um, which you can see there. Uh, brand new. I guess this this doesn't really tell much about the router itself, but more about the bits. But anyway, uh, the other change I made, I put a six amp hour battery on it, set to four amp hour to represent the most used battery in the INL platform, which is a four amp hour configuration. Just to see how she goes, we can switch it up to six if need be. I decided to use these just because that's an extra kilo of weight to help me keep the the base down onto the wood um, I'm not going to use any edge guides I just want to mill some funky little patterns in here just to see how it goes um, the parallel guides and, and, and whatever else we can uh, assess later <laughs> off we go so we press the button oh, sorry press the button turn it on <laughs> just made a mess out of myself <laughs> for pine uh, setting six is probably a little bit too fast it's uh, it's going at it like a stabbed rat it's uh, effortless but yeah you can uh, carve funky patterns into wood pine no problem let's try some oak So I did start off with uh, level 6, which is a bit too fast, even for oak, so um, with a 4 amp hour battery, this thing is plenty powerful enough, even with a 2 amp hour battery on the edge there, that just like effortless, um, but I guess it's a combination of the bits that we're using as well. Uh, I did went at it as a complete idiot, just to see what would happen, and um, when I really force it in there, you can see it stalled and it chipped a bit of the wood, um, so it does stop. And you then have to press the <laughs> unlock button and then the power button again to get it started. So it does, as a safety, not immediately resume as soon as you hit the power button again. So that's a nice feature there, safety-wise. Pretty beefy, this little uh, cordless router from Einhell. So yeah, definitely um, a good... Uh, a good little addition for those of you who are in the RNL platform. Let's go inside and we'll summarize there because I'm freezing my hands off. If you go in it fast, especially in the oak, you did see it that it stalls, it cuts out, the LEDs start flashing. Um, you have to then restart it. So to restart it, you press the button to basically lock it again so that the LEDs stop flashing. You then press the unlock button and then you press the power button and the machine will come back to life. Then in the uh, edge trim router configuration, super easy to use, uh, even if you cut into the wrong direction of the, 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 the turning 
direction of the router. It's indicated on here with an arrow. There is no indication on here as such. Yeah, super easy, nice and light, handy to use. What you'd expect from a palm router. Now, to summarize, what do I think? So, build quality, it's all sturdy, solid. Um, first impressions. Um, I like it that the router base itself, if we take it out of the plunge router, the router itself is aluminium, the housing is aluminium. Um, you can see on the inside, uh, there, if we shine a light on it, that the, oh, my battery just, there we go. Uh, on the inside there you can see the housing so that the, the, the red plastic is on the inside there where the, where the motor lives in that's all plastic but it's all kept inside an aluminium housing which is a lot more sturdier than for example the plastic housing on the Ryobi or the rigid AEG routers if you compress plastic like this you obviously have more flex in the housing of plastic than you have in aluminium it's a more sturdier material so over time this configuration will be more durable so that's nice uh, i like the palm router base it's nice and small i like it that they kept the base small as well it's perfectly round apart from the bit at the back there so you can run it along an, uh, an edge guide if you want to use that sort of thing um, the only downside here, as I said already, is that the rubber is peeling straight out of the box, which is not so sexy. And in other places, there's excessive glue, which after use is all covered in sawdust already, which is, is, is not so nice. So, yeah, the, I don't know if they kept these things inside of a shipping container in the middle of summer or somewhere, and they got rather hot. Or, you know, which then the glue runs out, whatever. Um, not so sexy. This base is nice as well, especially in combination with some of the heavier six or eight amp hour batteries. Great combination to use. I like it as well that you have this quick release depth adjustment, so you can just set it to where you want it and then use the revolver settings here for repetitive depth um oh it's locked for a de repetitive depth setting so you're always milling to the same depth standards if you like so your work pieces look pretty and nice and even not a lot of sanding and stuff required afterwards the bit i don't like so much is this whole kfaffle you've seen me during the features part of the video about the accessories <laughs> This is all very crowded, this plastic stuff, when it gets hot and stuff, it's, it's very difficult to, to use it in this sort of confined space. It's not a lot of room for this. Uh, a different design style knob would maybe be nicer there. So you can actually grab it in more than just the two places of this wing nut configuration. This is plastic, this black, black piece. So I could see that breaking at some point or if you drop it on a on, on, on the floor or whatever not it could it could break whatever so it, <laughs> that's where they save the money unfortunately um there's aftermarket bits out there that are probably better suited for your needs anyway it's nice of them that they throw it in so you can get going you get yourself familiar with routering if it's the first thing you've ever done um so yeah all in all a good starter set the other thing that i did notice is that i think the leds in here let me demonstrate let's use the most powerful battery that i've got going at the minute this thing is about 56 percent charged but for led lights that should not make any difference if i turn it on you see the leds they look rather bright but then if for example i take a a drill which has a similar battery you'll see the difference so that's what a drill battery LED looks like and this is what this looks like hold on oh pressing the wrong button there these are quite dim and I found myself especially in the edge trim router where the opening and the stuff especially when you use it for a while there's a fine dust film gathering on the inside of the plastic here because a static you know there's air movement 
in this plastic so this gets statically charged there's particles clogging up the inside the leds aren't very bright so you end up not seeing anything which is a bit annoying so especially because there's two of them i thought they'd be a bit more powerful but that's unfortunately not so nice the other thing that's a bit of a disappointment in my opinion is the opening is only 30 millimeters so if you have 45 degree um uh, the lighting is a lot less ideal there but yeah it's a 30 30 mil um if you have edge router trim bits 45 degrees they are slightly unfortunately shaped but yeah they they don't fit or barely but then on the inside there's all the aluminium stuff going on so if you put it on the inside i'll just loosely drop it in there for demonstration purposes that's all you can get out of a 45 degree which is not a lot that's about a useful cutting depth of about four millimeters which is basically nothing so you either then have to buy a specific 45 degree angle bit because yeah this is part of a bosch professional set um i had a quick look on amazon the ones regularly available they're between 35 and 45 millimeters in diameter in the largest point so in this configuration you can only use it with this base don't fit on the edge, which is a bit pointless with an edge trim bit but anyway that's the only other downside i think i can find on this device i think that sums it up quite nicely thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it i hope it was informative to you if you're in the market considering you know we had to wait almost two years for this to arrive it's finally here woohoo as a set available already the individual part as a palm router or as a plunge router uh, item later this year i think they released march february march they said any tips suggestions comments leave them down in the description below give it a thumbs up if you like what you see consider the subscribe button so you don't miss out on part two where we do a teardown so we see what the build quality of the router bits you know well, they're not the router bits of the router and its components are you know looking at them in more detail the brushness the brushless technology and then i'll see you in one of my next videos goodbye